from the NFL to Hollywood to fatherhood. Join me as I tackle my next journey in life, becoming Hollywood's next action star. Theragun to activate certain muscle groups. Set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes of backward walk to warm up for knee health, to build in just a little bit of cardio. Better pace it up. Couple sets of these for back health. Ten body weight ATG split squats. So I just got back from Vegas. It was an awesome trip. I was brought out there by the Tunnel to Towers Foundation. They're doing a big push out in the Vegas area and all across the nation to try to get every homeless veteran off the streets. That's their big uh, mission, their big, hairy, audacious goal. And I'm fully on board on that. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Um, they just bought a big lot in Vegas where they're going to house a bunch of homeless veterans. So we went out there. We were able to serve them, cook some, uh, you know, grill for them, eat with them, break bread and, you know, talk. And, uh, and then there was a great event later in the night. Um, I'll link down below if that's something you're into. They're also the same foundation that when 9-11 happened, um, they paid off the mortgages of of all of the families who were affected by it. Um, it just beautiful. So again, if, if that's something that you're into, you want to donate, I'll uh, put a link down below. Um, and then outside of that, you know, went to a bunch of NFL PA events, um, got to see a, a bunch of uh, old, you know, familiar faces, catch up, meet a bunch of great new people. Um, and then I got to spend three days with Derek Carr and that was awesome. Um, I was just going to stay there the rest of the nights that I wasn't being put up by tunneled towers. And I got there and I was just like, man, this is, so great just to be here around one of my best friends and his family is my family. So it was just, I didn't even leave after that. I didn't want to. Um, I made a, a few different videos the previous to this, if you want to go check them out, me working out, uh, chopping it up with them. So, um, yeah, just the busyness of, um, Hollywood and the audition circuit coming back up, you know, the, it's almost embarrassing how much time it takes me to really dial in an audition. But at the same time, it's not because, of. uh, a lot of people, they get a role and they have months to try to get it as, as good as they can. And they're giving you one or two days turnaround sometimes. And I'm having to find within that a, like two hour, three hour windows, a few of them when my kids are, you know, sleeping or, you know, I'm staying up until 3 a.m. to prep and shoot it. Nah, it wasn't good enough. Okay, let's wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow and shoot it before the kids wake up and it's too noisy to do it. That's what it's looking like right now. So there was the first thing to go was this content. Um, but I'm ramping it back up. I'll get it figured out. Uh, I'm in this for the long haul. This didn't go anywhere. So I hope y'all won't. Um, so I am about to go into my first working set over here, Bulgarian split squats, a different variation though. I'm literally just, uh, I'm going to be doing sets of five, just 40, 40 pound dumbbells in jumping and then catching at the bottom position, holding, jumping. Um, let's get to it. Uh, I'm just going to uh, do some one and a halves here. One and a half is half rep, full rep, half rep, full rep. Go half rep, one, two, three. Keeps the tension in the muscle longer. I feel tired and a half. 
I got like five, no, four hours and 18 minutes of sleep last night. Shouldn't even have checked the whoop. It was just in the background and it alerted me when it was the sleep score was ready and I didn't have any willpower, I clicked it. But it's not affecting me because I'm in here, but it's also good to gauge like, hey, my body's feeling real sluggish. Let's not do some super explosive thing or try to do something new and when your nervous system is not primed, not feeling good and in a potential injury risk situation. So, um, but I think even the best gains on days like these are, you know, the respect you get for yourself, the mental toughness that you gain. It's like you, you earn your own stripes, you prove to yourself, okay, I can be a man of my commitments. It's like a badge of honor almost. Like I feel like trash, but I'm gonna go get after it anyways because I'm that kind of guy. And not only physically over time does that compound and add up and give you great gains physically, but mentally uh, you're becoming something more because of it. Because the more you can respect yourself, the more you can trust yourself, the more you can uh, say that you're gonna commit to something and have confidence and certainty in your voice and body language, uh, the kind that cannot be faked, the kind that other people feel, starts with you. Keep moving. And then find the gems. Find the way that you made gains in the day. It could be the smallest things like, dude, I didn't, you know, I, d I didn't kick my dog. I, I, uh, I actually went through the mail today and paid the bills, you know. Um, find them. The more you find them, the more you'll build that muscle to see how far you've come from your baseline as opposed to how far away from everything that you want is. That just leads to discouragement and inaction. Keeping them moving. I'm going to try a different variation of uh, RDLs today. It's like a pseudo single leg variation. So that my back foot is going to be propped up right here on this plate. I don't know what these are called. I saw some super buff athletic dude on Instagram doing them. And uh, I thought that might be a fun ride. And uh, maybe I can get a great stimulus on the RDLs without having to go crazy heavy. Um, so see how 135 feels. further out. I like it. Yes, pretty light. Okay. So I, I can already feel I can already feel the utility in these because I started on my left leg, which is my stronger leg because it's my healthier knee. Um, some of the muscles in my right leg are, are a little more shut down and atrophied, and I have to really stay on top of it, build them back up, and stay on top of it to keep them. And so I'm in that process of building them back up. 135 felt crazy light. You know, I felt like I could have gone two or three plates on that leg and then going to the right side, it felt significantly different. Um, so this may be a, a great exercise to kind of balance out those asymmetries in strength. Um, so I'm only gonna go up to 185 on this next set, even if it's easy on the left side still. And I think I'm gonna start on my right side and uh, just match the reps on the left it's a good thing to do when you got a weaker body part.
You know what I think part of it is? Right side actually felt easier this time. I think it's because I started with it. I think I need to not go straight into the other leg uh, and take a little break because now the left side kind of felt pretty difficult. I mean, much more than it should have. Yeah, so I've just been, I've been, I've been blitzed lately and um, just in the season of life I'm in right now with two kids, it has uh, been a challenge. Something has, has to go, so it's been sleep. Generally, I'll wake up around 6.30 and, you know, do my morning routine, kind of get showered, ready, um, you know, read the Bible, spend time with God, do a little meditation. Help my wife uh, get the kids off and ready for their uh, parents' day out thing they go to, a little preschool thing. And um, by that time, then I'll have like breakfast. By that time, it's about 9.30. So I have about from 9.30 to 1.30 to, um, you know, work on anything that I'm working on, whether it's an audition, reading a script, and I have to get my workout in before I go pick up the kids at 1.30. That's when I film these most of the time. Uh, oftentimes things are getting shuffled as they go because there's always little fires to put out. But go get the kids, you know, bring them back home, put them down, you know, feed them, put them to bed for their nap. That's like 3 p.m. by that point. Then I got from 3 to 5, they wake up and I got, so I got that window and that's usually get back to emails. If somebody wants to meet up, you know, that's so hard to even fit into the schedule, but that's where that goes. And so everything is kind of stealing from my ability to really dive in and, and focus deeply on one thing. Um, and it's like, I don't have the allotment because then from five to eight, the kids are awake and I don't work. You know, it's all family time. I try to keep my phone off of me for that whole period. And then the kids are finally down. Usually my son it delays me out to like 8.30. So then it's 8.30 and it's kind of like ready to start getting ready for bed. But I still have stuff I need to do. Like I've, I have to edit these videos and that's pretty much when I'm editing all my videos is at night. And then kind of scheduling all the shorts and, you know, getting those chopped up and pushed out. That's happening at, at, at night from like 8 to 12. Um, sometimes it'll go until 2 a.m. You know, if I'm also still prepping an audition. Um, and so it's just been crazy because when I think about the day altogether, it's like, no, I have so much time. I look, I got so many hours and then you really break it down and it's just these little chunks and there's so much to fit in at, that I'm having to, you know, sleep five hours a night, four to six hours a night, and then sometimes catch up with an eighter, um, which is really not catching up. I'm in a major sleep debt, but I know that, you know, I'm starting something new with the content stuff here and um, trying to get other things going outside of just waiting till I book that perfect role that, you know, lands at the perfect moment for me. Um, and so being that I, I've got to allocate more time, energy, resources to that and something's got to go, it's got to be sleep. So it's a grinder year and I'm, I'm okay with that. It's not going to be long term. I'll be able to delegate more and more stuff out over time as I get things more built up, start bringing in more money. Um, so that's just kind of where I'm at. I, and I also understand that, you know, some of my workouts are going to suffer a little bit like today's. Uh, 
but it's still better to keep moving and get the work in, even if it's not, you know, the perfect condition. Um, perfection is something that I've, I've struggled with and continue to fight uh, because that actually leads you to inaction. If you think everything needs to be perfect circumstances, you get way less done. So I know I'm still pushing the needle um, and uh, not everything can be optimal all at once. You got to give and take, make some sacrifices um, to push in on the things that matter most. Some seasons, some things require extra energy, love, care, and attention. So that's where I'm at. A little catch up on me. Uh, I've got a couple more sets here. Uh, I'm going to do one more of each and then call it a day. Here we go. this and realize outside of calves I didn't go to failure on any sets in this leg day a lot of people would be like what are you even working out for if you're not trying to build muscle and for me leg days are not about building muscle it's about retaining and gaining athleticism staying explosive keeping those movements in place and tuned up and you know explosive and active in the muscles through the range of motions um, because you know you stop moving, you lose it, and you keep moving, you gain it, and, and movement is lotion to the joints. And so I'm I'm trying to focus on keeping the the knee healthy, uh, being able to continue to jump, change directions, and sprint if I need to. I'm working back into that as I'm getting my knee healthier. Um, so I'm totally come okay coming into the leg day. I'm not trying to grow the thighs. You know I'm okay just touching these weights, moving them fast, getting in, getting out hammer in the calves, you know, because those need to grow. But upper body, we're getting that whole thing, baby. Grow it all. All right, I get to start. I finally got a treadmill. It's one of those kind of desk walking treadmills. I think it's only like 40, 50 pounds, so you can move it to different areas. It's got a little bit of an incline you can set it to. So it's cool. It was cheaper, and it's not super in the way and immovable like a lot of those are. But I got to start adding. I got to start doing more cardio. It's just such an easy thing for me to skip because I know how to eat and manipulate my calories to always stay pretty cut and lean without doing it. But I know there's obviously a lot of health benefits, heart benefits, and I have to start being more cognizant of that as I age in my mid thirties now, 35. There's just so many things, like I was saying earlier, so many things in the day that I need to get done, that I should get done, that I should be consistent about cardio is one of them and it, they're just it's so hard to pack them all in and be consistent with all of them especially because to really get ahead on certain things in life you, you really just gotta tunnel everything down and do you know one to three things that you really really focus on in life to push the needle in a big way on them so yeah as I was mentioning earlier that's kind of what my life is right now it's super busy I hardly have time to even check my email to where it's constantly building up to 500, 1,000 unchecked emails, and you gotta go do some blitz. And okay, most, probably like 99% of the emails are trash. They're stupid. They don't need to be read, but there's a handful that, oh shoot, you didn't pay your corporation excise tax this year, and you need to do that, or you're kind of screwed and you're gonna get fined. There's always those buried in there, and you have to go through them all in order to get there. But there's, so just that time management thing. So sleep's another one. You gotta be consistent about your sleep. They're saying now that 
sleep consistency may be even more important than overall sleep duration. So going to bed and waking up at the same time every day, obviously to a certain extent, you wanna give yourself that eight-ish hours of sleep at night, but I'm not getting that at all. I'm all over the board. 2 a.m., I'm going to bed, sometimes it's 10, sometimes it's 12. Um, but there's a little bit of a peace of mind just accepting, hey, that's what this year is. This year is gonna be one where sleep has to go. I do have to work every night after putting the kids to bed. And sometimes into the morning hours, get up early and do it again. Um, and just knowing it's not a forever thing and it's going to put me ahead in the long run, it's gonna get this momentum, this big boulder moving, and then it'll be easier to push. And then eventually it'll be rolling downhill on its own. And so I feel a little less rushed all throughout the day because I know, hey, it's all right, I got another block tonight to get all this stuff. I thought I for sure would get done throughout the day that there's always a bunch of things that I can't. I'll have enough time later tonight. Just throw it in that block. And it's helping me to be a little less, ironically, less like tense and less temperamental, um, you know, with my family, because I'm just less rushed throughout the day because I know I have time to get to something. And I'm not trying to push it all into this small portion of the day so that I can get to bed on time. Um, so just an unforeseen benefit there. I'm having to find positive, I'm having to find the gains in something that's obviously not ideal, like shorting my sleep. And uh, I'm still up making great gains in my positive mental attitude. I'm finding and framing the good in everything. Obviously I fall short sometimes, but even then I'm like, dang, well, hey, I caught it quicker. It took me a minute to, to catch that I was going down a bad path mentally. I screwed up, made a repair, said, I'm sorry, whatever the case may be, or got back on track. Yeah. So I'm always finding a way that I'm getting better. And that mindset, it's powerful, man. It stacks, it compounds. That's all I got to say about that. As I mentioned, I fell off the consistency of the content thing a little bit. The idea sounds so easy. I'll just, I'll just press play even when I'm, I got these auditions that are taking a lot of time and then explain my process as I go. That's good and all, but what I couldn't foresee, some of the challenges, I've got such short windows to do that work to sit down and really break down the scenes on paper, sitting at my desk in my office. Sometimes I don't even have time for that. It's literally such a quick turnaround. I'm on my feet filming it as I'm learning the scene. Obviously a ton of those takes are trash and I'm figuring it out as I go. And I don't even have a reader. I had to pre-record the lines and I'm hearing them. And then I speak them with the, you know, behind the camera with the same microphone I'm speaking into for my audition when I'm standing on this side of the camera. And then I sync them over lamb so you can't hear the speaker echo. All that stuff takes a lot of time. Um, and so to add an extra layer in there of like, also, here's my process. I'm learning, as I'm even doing that, I'm cognizant like, wow, my, my process is very instinctive. It's very non-lingual. It would take me a good bit of time to pencil and paper, jot out bullet points, expand on them, to even explain this to you. I can do it. I'm sure I'll find the time to do it. I'm sure I'll have certain auditions that are better than others to be able to take the time to do that in a non-rush way. And I will get to it. I intend to anyways. But, uh, you know, because I do want to be of help. I do want to be able to provide answers to the questions that I had in such a, you know, kind of private industry and metaphysical. Everybody tries to play into like how elusive it is and how hard to describe. People see it as, as magic. You're inhabiting these characters. That, there's a lot of just really practical stuff. And you ask you know, practically, what do I do with this, that, and the other? And people don't give you, they just give you workarounds and say things in artistic ways that sound good, but really serve them and make them seem like even better actors. And so I wanna be able to provide those practical things for you. It's just so hard to take the time to sit down, really reflect and you know get all those answers out and then create the content around it and then edit it up so it, is cohesive and makes sense because I'm a rambler and then post it, you know. Um, oh. So it helps me if you have specific questions to things, I can probably riff on those a little quicker. Maybe this is what I should start doing. Maybe I should start doing cardio at the beginning of my workouts and just ramble and have bullet point things of like, 
here's something to know going into an audition. Here's, you know, something not to do. Here's like a list of things your agent should give you when they sign you of just foundational, unwritten Hollywood rules that nobody tells you and you have to learn the hard way on set somewhere and accidentally offend somebody. Um, and just start riffing as I'm walking on this treadmill, getting the endorphins running. And that can be a more practical way to start these workouts, at least from the industry side of things.